I've never done this art style before. If you've seen my art, you know this is, I'm, I'm very much more abstract and this is much more minimalist. And I think that's one of the important things that we're going to, we're going to find out in this conversation as we're walking through because as I am talking I am I am sensing and I'm understanding some concepts that I just came off of an Instagram live where I did this process and I'm having new concepts come to me right now so when you sit down to do this realize that you're going to have new concepts and new thoughts and new revelations open up to you and because this is how God works this is how our brain is created this is how he created us to think and to have conversations with him because they're ongoing. They're not one and done. And if they're one and done, that means we're probably very possibly not in as close a relationship as we might want to be. But that's that's one of the things that made me realize because I tend to be an abstract artist with lots of different layers and lots of different colors and and just a plethora of media and directions and different types of uh, brush strokes and different products I use and different applicators for the paint to minimalism or a minimalist art style. This is what we're going to do in this conversation we're having right now with God. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, God, where, where are all these extra things that have come in and I've liked them or I've paid attention to them because they've had my attention and now they're suffocating me. And how are we going to set that suffocation aside? How are we going to allow God to come in and say, we can put these aside and we can just minimize and look at the truth. So one of the things um, that happens when we're, when we're wading through this stuff is we have fear, we have anxiety and and we have them initially and they're stoked by the media or we don't have them and the media decides to come in and say let's see if we can stir this up and I'm not saying media is a ne negative thing I, at all but if it's a constant barrage I remember when 9-11 happened um, it was really difficult to turn the TV off because I wanted to see what was gonna happen next we want to know what's gonna happen next even if nothing is gonna happen next something might happen next and I promise you, if you turn off the TV, you turn off social media, something may happen next, but your mom or your sister or your husband or your best friend, somebody is going to call you and say, oh my gosh, did you know this happened? You're not going to miss anything. And if worse comes to worse, your phone is going to go off and you're going to get an emergency alert. You're not going to miss anything. So for just just a minute, let's let's think about how we shut those things off. And we change where we're at. We change what we're doing. And let's just walk into this conversation. So in this conversation, the first thing I want to do is encourage you to, as the saying go, goes, draw a line in the sand. But instead of in the sand, we're going to draw a line on our paper. And this is a, again, this, this is just um, a Canson mixed media page out of my Canson journal. You can get them at Walmart. They're, they're pretty inexpensive actually. You can use printer paper and I'm gonna show you when we're done. This, pro this looks really cool on printer paper too. So, but first we're gonna draw a line. We're gonna draw a line in the sand. And what this line is actually doing is it's not in the sand, it's on our paper and no it's not straight and it doesn't have to be this is the we're done this is the buck stops here because at this point I'm going to stop and think about that verse that says take every thought captive this is that line this is the line that says take every thought captive this is my stop point that says what am I thinking what is occupying my thoughts constantly? What's going on and can I make this something that I see right now? So I can acknowledge it and I can take it captive because once you pull that thought down and you take it captive and you look at it, you go, 
Is this a God thought? Is this from God? Is this from me? Or is this from the enemy? Where does this thought fall on this line? If it's not loving and kind and generous, then it's not from God. Because I can tell you, even if we're working through conviction, God is not kicking you in the middle of the back, slamming you to the ground with conviction. That is not conviction. Conviction is God putting his arm around you saying, we need to have a chat out about this. We can work on this. We can fix this. And it's loving and it's kind. It is not slamming you down. Okay? So this is our let's stop and think about what we're thinking. Let's pay attention. Let's stop and take note of where we are mentally and emotionally. Okay? It's that put the brakes on. And once we put the brakes on and we take note of this, we also want to change our perspective. If nine times out of 10, we're gonna to need to change our perspective because basically you have 90,000 thoughts a day between 6,000 and 90,000. And of those 90,000 thoughts, about 80,000 are negative. So we wanna flip as much as we can. I'm sorry, 80,000 of the, I totally said that wrong. 80,000 of those thoughts are the same thoughts you had yesterday. It's about, I think, 60,000 that are negative, but I'm gonna have to look at that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I find it out because it just completely slipped my mind. But anyway, here's our line. Now we're gonna change perspective. And in art, perspective is the direction that the painting is drawing you in. So it's either drawing you from the bottom to the top, from the side, from one side to the other side, from the top to the bottom. It's that point where it's a perspective that you're looking at, okay? So I'm gonna put my perspective right here, okay? I'm gonna say this is my perspective, and I'm going to draw that as a path. And I know that I'm gonna have more than one perspective and more than one opportunity to find that path that I'm thinking about. Okay, so this is my perspective. And I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put one more in here, just because I can. So this is our perspective, and where's our perspective? Well, all of a sudden, our perspective is looking to the future because this is the horizon line, okay? And in art, when you have a horizon line and you have your perspective, you know that you're looking toward something. In this case, I'm going to be looking to the mountain. And I know there are mountains beyond that. And there's probably a mountain over here, or at least a good sized hill. And what I want to do is I want to put my focus and my perspective not on what is going on right here, right now, but I want to put my focus and perspective on the truth. And the truth is life and the truth is future. It's right here where I'm starting, but it's future also. Okay. And I know once I look to the hills, once I look to the hills and I get to the mountain, I can get to a mountain experience, but I can also get to a mountain and see further. And I know when I see further, there are going to be some more clouds. And those clouds are rain and they're comforting and they're healing. That's not a very good cloud, but we're going to keep it. And then I know that even beyond that cloud, there is more to be found. And I know there are other things beyond the clouds that I might not be able to see right now. But I know once I get my perspective correctly and I'm looking to the mountain, I'm looking to the truth, then I will be able to see a brighter future. Even if I can't see beyond the mountain, I know the brighter future is there. I know what's going on right now is 
not the end of the world. I know my perspective is, okay, did we have food yesterday? Yes. Do we have food today? Yes. Did I have a place to live yesterday? Yes. Do I have a place to live today? Yeah, I do. So I might only be able to see what yesterday was, what today is, and maybe the next couple of days, but I know God is up here looking down because his perspective is from up here and he's seeing everything and he's already planned for this and he's already taken care of this. So when I'm talking about when the walls are closing in, I'm talking about a God conversation that sits with you and says, I know this is all you can see, but I can see from up here. And I have created from the beginning to right now to the future. And nothing is going to touch you. Nothing is going to harm you. Everything, you know, it says in scripture that a thousand will fall by your side, 10,000 by your other side, but no harm will come to you. That's where we're at. This is this open space that I'm talking about. So when I say when the walls close in, he's going to bring us to an open space. That's Psalm 118.5 which is in my distress, I cried out to the Lord. The Lord put me in a wide place. We're already in a wide place, even though we feel like the walls are closing in. We're already in a wide place. We only need to change our perspective. So in changing our perspective, we know there's black and white. We know there's gray, but we also know there's color. And we know there's light. And I know if I take a flashlight, I know in Kentucky and maybe where you are, we have storms. And when a storm comes up and it looks like it's going to be pretty, pretty scary, we grab the flashlights to make sure they're available. And if the light goes out, if the power goes out, I'm not going to take that flashlight and shine it at my feet because then I can only see one or two steps ahead of me. I'm going to shine it to the forward. I'm going to let that beam of light shine in front of me so I can see further where I'm going. And it spans out and that gives you that space. It may not be a whole lot of wide space, but it gives you a space. So when I'm talking about that and we're going to talk about color, this first piece right here, and this is a really cool fun technique and I'm sure you know this and I had forgotten it if I knew it. Maybe I never knew it, but it's so cool. I get really excited. I literally, I woke up at 4.30 this morning going, I can't wait to do this. So this is our main path. This is our main perspective. And in that perspective, we want as much light that we can find, that we can get as much truth that we can have in the middle. So I'm going to choose, um, we're gonna start with crayons and I'm gonna do this part first, which is the land. Then I'm gonna do the mountains and then I'm gonna do the sky. So for this part, I'm gonna choose the lightest crayon in the colors that I want, and I'm gonna use, and I'll show you the colors as I go. So I'm gonna start with greens and blues down here. So I'm going to choose, and I can't remember what color because I just did this, er, okay, maybe it's this one, we'll see. We're using this one, we're gonna, we're gonna say it's this one. So I'm gonna choose, this is kind of a yellow, yellow green or green yellow or something, I don't know. And I'm not too worried about coloring. In fact, I don't want to color too darkly. I want just to fill in nicely. And you're gonna get crayon boogers and it happens and we're just gonna go with it. And I'm gonna use only crayons for this bottom part first. And in a second, you'll totally see why. Is that? Okay. And then for this one, I'm gonna go just a shade darker. I hope. Yeah, I'm gonna go a shade darker. So I think I'm gonna use this one. Eh, that's kind of a shade darker. It's a different shade altogether, but actually I like it. So we're keeping our main section here, the path that we walk, we're going to keep light with different shades and different hues, different colors, but we're mainly going to keep it light because we know we wanna walk in the truth. And then this color, I'm gonna go a little bit darker only because, for one thing I can, I think this is, is this the one I want? Nope, that's not it. Hold on, I gotta find my crayon again. I think it's this one. You know, I just did this. You would think I would have kept the crayons out so I would know which one I used. But no, that would be too easy. Oh, this one, I like this one. 
So we're gonna go a little bit darker over here. And it, you know, we walk through life and we do have difficulties and we do have struggles and we do have dark times, darker times. But those dark times only show us how much greater the light times are. And they really complement. Unfortunately, we may, fortunately, we probably learn our most I'm pretty sure in the darker times. I don't love that. It is how it works and it does work beautifully. <laughs> hmm, imagine that, God knows what he's doing. What a concept. So I'm gonna come back over here. I keep picking up these crayons thinking they're dark. And this is the thing. If you're doing this, test your crayons before, like I've got a scratch sheet of paper over here. I'm checking out which ones I wanna use because what they look like here does not necessarily transfer to what they look like on the page. So I think I'm gonna use this one. Sorry guys, I should have, could have had this done, but I didn't. Oh, I know where I'm gonna use that one. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one. And you notice that I'm coloring from my perspective point because I want always to keep my perspective and my focus on Christ. I want my perspective and my focus to be to the mountains, to the mountain of God, to the truth and the life. It also looks pretty cool when you color it this way. If you do it the other way, it's not, I mean, it works, but it's not quite as cool. Okay, and then I've got one more over here. And what color did I say I was gonna do this one? Raw. Mm -hmm. That one's really pretty blue. Oh, how about this one? We're gonna do this one. I think this is apple green or something. One of the things we're working on while we're having this conversation with God, because of the way God has created us, and I always go back to the brain stuff because it's so fascinating the way God did this. We have just used a portion of the brain that is basically assigned to the drawing section. And now we're using another portion that is assigned or the portion of the brain where the coloring takes place and they're separate portions. They're also separate portions on whether you're coloring with a crayon or you're coloring with a paintbrush. Okay. Now this is where it gets really fun and I'm really excited to show you. I can't wait to show you the white crayon because you know what? I figured out what cray white crayons are for. I'm so excited because uh, I always wondered, I, like I said, I might have known this ahead of time, but I may have forgotten it. But, and I keep doing this because you get lots of crayon boogers. So you're keeping your focus forward. You're keeping your focus on the truth. You're keeping your perspective in the truth, in reality. So I'm going to take this right here and I have, um, Crayola crayons, no, Crayola markers. And these markers are the wash, ultra clean washable. Okay, well they're not that clean because I already got them all over my fingers while I got. But I'm gonna use, you can use colors that are opposite what you put down or you can use close to the same. So for this middle, I'm gonna use this green, which is close to the same. and. You're gonna see what happens and it's so stinking cool. Okay, I think it's cool. And I'm gonna show you in just a second what this is gonna look like. And you're just coloring. All you're doing is just going over that crayon. 
And it's kind of like, I want you to think about it as in you've recognized your perspective, you've recognized your stop it now, and your take every thought captive, but you're taking the Holy Spirit theoretically, and you're sealing this because you've already been sealed. You've already been sealed with Christ. But what you're doing now, and this is representational, is you're taking this life that you have and you've been sealed with Christ, with the Holy Spirit. So you're taking your perspective and you're having it sealed with the Holy Spirit. And I'm using the crayons as your life and the marker as your Holy Spirit. And this is our God's Holy Spirit, not yours. So you have been sealed with Christ, so you're sealing your perspective. And let me show you what this looks like if you can see. I don't know. If you can see all the variation in here, this is the glorious variation of your life in Christ. The texture, the deep hues, the different colors. And this is where you really begin to understand the perspective and understand how the truth applies to your life. Okay, so I'm gonna do these other ones. Um, let me see. Uh, I think I'm gonna use this one. Yep. So every time you go over this crayon with the marker, you get that same effect, which is really pretty cool. And when you're doing this without me talking and you're doing it yourself, you're actually opening and beginning to understand you have a conversation with God anytime you want it, right there, all the time, ready to talk to you. And this is one of those ways to quiet yourself and have that conversation, okay? So I am going to do this side now, but I think I'm gonna go over it in a blue instead of this green. We'll see what happens. It may look good, it may look terrible, I don't know. Hey, look, it looks just almost like the other color. So I sat here for like an hour before, no, it was the hour before the Instagram. And I just played with this and had so much fun, but I, I began to have those insights you know, because when you sit down and you color, your mind just kind of opens up and you begin to understand things and the Lord begins to talk to you in ways that you might not have experienced before because when do you ever really get this quiet and really get your mind to slow down and not talk and not think and not have to focus on anything? which is one of the reasons coloring books are so popular is because you can just color. And with your brain, it relaxes the mind, it relaxes the thought processes. And it kind of goes into that be still and know. That's kind of where I get with that. Okay, not too bad. I probably should have used a different color, but I like that okay. So this is one of my favorite colors. Um, I don't even know what this one is. Hmm, sea foam. And it goes over this one really nicely. And it still gives us that light center. But adds that perspective that we're looking for in that direction. So for this one, I'm going to use yellow. I think. Yeah, why not? Let's use yellow. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we still keep that light but we get the texture of underneath, okay? So you can probably start seeing that this is where the wide open spaces come. This is the visual of what the Lord does for us when he sets us in a wide place. Okay, so now that I've done these, and this is still a little damp after you color on it, 
So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do the mountains. And I do know when I'm done with this, I'm also going to go in and I am going to put down all the crayon colors or all the colors that I like or whatever. And I'm going to go keep the names and then I'm going to go over them with the marker so I know what they look like. So the next time I sit down to do this, which is probably going to be again in an hour or so, I will know what colors I like and what colors I want to use in coordination with, with what other colors. It's kind of like scripture. You memorize scripture so you know when you walk into specific times in your life that scripture is in your mind and the Holy Spirit is right there to bring it up to you and help you through whatever you're doing. It's like you're ultra prepared ahead of time. Okay. And then I'm going to do, I liked this blue I used a while ago. Hold on. I know I'm putting my arms all in front of the camera. Sorry. So I liked this one a while ago. This turned out really good. I could have used a smaller paper and made a smaller image and this would have gone quicker but I also realized that if I had done that you would not have been able to um, see it as well. So I also want to find, hold on, I'm looking for a crayon. Here it is. Nope, that's not it. Here it is. I'm going to do this one. I haven't, I'm going to try this one in bright, in gray. And let's see what happens. Okay. So now let's do this. No, actually let's do that one first. Ooh, let's do this one first. Let's do this one in purple because we know mountains tend to look purple when they're a long way off. I'm trying to like get this part colored because I really like this part, but I want to get to the white because the white is so much fun. You could put white behind any of these, but it works really well when you use it for the sky. And it just, it kind of reminds me of salvation and how once you're, once you give your life to the Lord, that becomes the basis of your life. It becomes your, hmm, I don't think I want to do that one on there. When you give your life to the Lord, you are washed whiter than snow, which we know, but that also comes through everything that you do and you talk about and where you go, which is kind of cool. So when you can do like single, single strokes, which is hard for me to do because I want to keep going back and forth, especially on these dark colors. When you can do single strokes, it really lets that crayon behind shine through. So you get a lot more texture and a lot more movement behind kind of what the Holy Spirit does constantly in your life. He's always there. He's always working and talking to you when you're able to listen and guiding you even when you don't know it. Okay, I can't handle it. I have to do it back and forth. <laughs> I can't stand it. I gotta go back and forth. It drives me crazy. And then I'm going to do that one back there. You know what? Let's do a light purple and see what happens with that gray. Because I haven't done that yet. Okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Probably should have done it the other way. But that's okay. This is a learn as you go. This is going to bug me, so I have to fix it. 
Okay. We know that we want to focus perspective, pay attention to our thoughts. So now let's do the white grain. And I'm gonna do it down here. I'm gonna leave this white and then I might do up there and I'll leave probably leave that for now, just for the sake of time. So the white crayon is a amazing thing. After you use the marker, you can go back with the white crayon and you can lighten up what you just painted or what you just colored, which is really cool because then you can lighten it even more and change the way it looks. Because sometimes you think something is gonna be light with one of these colors and then it ends up way darker than you thought. Oops, sorry. And white is fun to work with because you can't really see it. You can feel it though, and that's helpful. So, okay. And the white crayon gives a lot of crayon boogers. Whoops. Okay. This is one of my favorite colors out of that Crayola marker pack. And it's really funny because I didn't even know it. The name of it is Sandy Tan, which cracks me up. So once you, this is a, this is a lot darker color than what you're gonna see that I put on here. And I'm gonna do it upside down because it's easier for me to do that way. So when I do this, you see how light it comes on because of that white behind it? And then it has little texture already in it because of the marks or the um, application. Well, I got some blue in there, but that's okay because of the application of when I was dragging the crayon across the paper. So again, these conversations with God, when you sit down to do this, you're not necessarily having to think about well, I want to talk to God about this and I want to talk to God about that. This isn't necessarily what you need to do. You can sit down and begin doing this and you know what happens? God starts talking to you. Because for once you don't have an agenda of all the things you want to get out and you need to say and you need to take care of and you have a set amount of time to do it in. None of that is prevalent. It's just you and some movement and God. It also allows you to move into flow state, which is incredibly good for the brain, but it's also flow state that allows you to be sensitive to the spirit. Okay. So I'll just do the top one real quick and then we'll move on. So again, the white crayon, and I'll show you what I'm talking about putting it over the top in just a minute. Just the process of coloring this page and creating this landscape, this minimalist landscape, allows you to step into a more open feeling, a more calmed situation. And that's really what being in an open space does is it calms you down. You don't feel confined, you don't feel pressured, you don't feel all of the stress. And I think it's this one, hold on. Nope. It's really funny because this two crayon, these two markers, one looks darker than the other and it's actually the lighter one. So you can see how bringing this in, this blue, 
And honestly, when I start coloring the blue sky, which is hilarious, it makes me want to take a deep breath. It just naturally makes me want to pull in and go, oh, I can breathe. Another thing you can do when you come to this, or even when you walk into or you sit down just prior to sitting down to doing a Bible study or a quiet time, this sounds silly, but it's amazing. Next time you go to the store, if you will get a bottle of bubbles, kids bubbles, and you can do this process with kids. They love it. They're really good at it. You will get a bottle of bubbles and you go outside and you blow bubbles before you do this, before you do your Bible study, before you do quiet time. Blowing bubbles automatically puts you in a position to have to take deep breaths and you're not even thinking about it and it helps you again get more oxygen to the brain which calms you down okay this is dry so let me show you what happens when you put the white it's kind of hard to see probably from where you are okay this is white this is dry now too you might be able to see it it tones it down just a bit Okay, and then I would go back with this one and put the white behind it again, and I'll probably use this crayon, this color for this, and then I'm gonna leave that white. You can do this same idea. This can be water, and you can do the sky. All of these things. What makes this happen, which is really funny, is your let's stop here line, which is your horizon line, and your perspective and when you're doing perspective it always has one point and it may be a point over here and your perspective goes this way or a point over here and your perspective goes this way it may be maybe a more jagged point but it always goes to the horizon line starts at the starts at the horizon line small and then it gets bigger okay let me show you the ones i did earlier So this one is very much like the earlier one. And this is kind of what I was playing around with. My mountains got kind of big on that one, but that's okay. So this is a conversation with God. This is an art conversation with God. And this is a way to help you express and experience open spaces in a visual manner. Okay. Hope this is helpful and I hope it's something that you want to try on your own. Again, it's just crayons and markers.